Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, we are the Vimar Galaxy field, uh, sorry, team, um, and we did a basket analysis on uh, products in stores, supermarkets, on five specific categories. This is a very broad description of our project. Uh, now, the team in uh, more or less random order, Elena, Simone, Chiara, Andrea, and Adam. Uh, and these are our superpowers. Um, okay, so our task was to, uh, so basically DMAR is a retailer and they have many supermarkets like, like you've heard, and they gave us uh, data from for, um, about transactions from four different shops. And they, they think these shops are different in some way. They categorize them in different categories. And they wanted us to check if they are indeed different uh, based on five specific groups of products. Um, to spoil you the, the end, I'll tell you that the results show uh, that there are indeed differences. But in order to, to have confidence in that statement, we would have to check more data, always more data. Um, okay, the data set included six months of transactions from four stores. Um, we had uh, item quantities, prices, and their categories. Uh, and also we, we could join the transaction list with the assortment catalog. So we have all the details, like um, all, the, sorry, all the category, I'll, I'll show you the category in a second. Uh, it was two gigabytes of data, format was uh, pretty clean, we didn't have to spend too much time on cleaning the data. Um, and this is the category tree, so this is what we got in the catalog file. Um, from the single product, through the family, set, group, and so on. And we were interested, so, sorry, DIMAR were interested in five different groups of uh, groups of uh, products. So we were analyzing uh, the, the product tree based on, on the groups. Uh, so we started by warming up and it took us uh, a bit too long probably. Uh, we first did some clean, cleaning of the, of the data, not, not too much then. Uh, we went into the exploration stage uh, and we had fun. Everyone wanted to do something different, and everyone did some of their, you know, the, their interesting parts. Um, and then we we also did some things that we weren't asked for, like analyzing the time structure of uh, of sales. Um, and finally, we did what we were supposed to do. Uh, so we analyzed uh, the typical uh, typical transactions for four different classes of shops. And we built a predictive model, uh, which I will explain uh, later in the presentation. The tools that we used uh, were mostly uh, Python, uh, using NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. Um, Chiara did some analysis with uh, Apache Spark, uh, Scala, and SQL. And uh, our visualization tool was uh, mainly B3, uh, and a bit of Gephi for network graphs. Uh, the methodology that we used, uh, we started with analyzing uh, statistical measures of the differences in sales in uh, shops. Then the, uh, the approach for analyzing, for building a predictive model uh, was uh, similar to the TFIDF approach uh, for text analysis. Uh, we did some network uh, discovery network uh, analysis, and uh, finally, the well, the, the main the main outcome of uh, of this is a kind of report which you will see in a few minutes that uh, the the data providers can use to see the differences between the shops. Uh, so these are our some of our preliminary analysis. Um, we can see because we wanted first to check out if there are indeed any differences between the four category before uh, between the four shops that they, we were given. Uh, so, for example, things like items per transaction, it's a it's a pretty obvious measure of how let's uh, of whether a shop is a one within an urban area where people go and buy just a few items, or it's more of a 
maybe a suburban a store where people go buy cars and take uh, big baskets of items. So you can see that there is a um, there is a difference between these two shops. This is uh, uh, these are just IDs of our shops. Don't uh, pay too much attention. So there are two two that have um, a mean of about 30 items per transaction and two uh, that have a mean of about 20. Um, so this is so. So this is the first sign that they are indeed different, but we couldn't really see forecasters. By, by looking at this, we can only say, okay, uh, there are two, but, but maybe not four. Ne next thing is uh, weight per transaction. And this is maybe more uh, what Limar was looking for, because um, by looking at this, you can see that in one shop, people buy, um, people's baskets are heavier in general. So, uh, in maybe in these three shops or the the, the green shop, uh, it's it doesn't make much sense to put a lot of heavy items, a lot of bulk uh, packaged um, items, and so on. Uh, and also, we did some time analysis just to uh, just to discover what what kind of shops can we expect. Uh, although we were told uh, before by Enrica that uh, there might be some touristic shops, some city shops, and so on. So we can clearly see from here that uh, during the Italian holiday in August, uh, we have a peak in sales in these two shops. Uh, so we can, we can assume that they are the, more, uh, uh, the ones located in more touristic areas. Uh, we actually know where the shops are, but we tried not to buy us ourselves, so this is... We didn't, we didn't adjust this to what they were, uh, what they given us. Um, okay, now we, um, as I said, the, the first, the first thing was to analyze it all statistically uh, by looking at differences in sales of different families of products. What you can see here are not individual products like um, water, Santa Anna, or some. Sorry for advertising, I didn't mean to do it. But, uh, so these are not individual products, these are more uh, families, and the family means um, it's uh, water between one liter and one and a half liters. Uh, so these are quite specific, but uh, not, not, not too broad. Um, and we calculated the uh, normalized sales of each of the families in all four shops, and then we sort them by standard deviation of, this, of, of these four data points. Okay, you can say a standard deviation on four data points is not uh, really, uh, it's not statistically significant, but um, well, what we can say from here is that the shops that we were given are indeed um, different in terms of sales of these uh, four, of these um, families, but whether they, uh, w whether we can extrapolate to other shops we don't, because we have enough data, thousands of items from these families were uh, sold. But if we were given a fifth shop, whether it would, it would uh, comply with uh, one of the categories, we have no idea. We, we just know that these four are different, but whether others are the same, who knows. Um, and this is related to the, to the confidence intervals of our data, you can see that they hugely overlap, that the intervals are uh, very broad. And that's also the result of the fact that we only have four data, data points. And uh, e even though there are differences, we cannot really conclude that they can be extrapolated. Uh, this is the, one of the sample Plots showing the most import, the most differentiating items in uh, the four categories of shops. So if we sort by the standard deviation of uh, sales in, uh, uh, in in different families, we have. Um, uh, sorry, I should mention that these are. Um, this data is filtered for the five categories that uh, Dimar asked us to uh, analyze, which is cheese, wine. Um, oil, uh, pet food, and pasta. Typical Italian items to buy, especially pet food. Um, so you can see that uh, 
if if they wanted to to base their, if they are sure that these uh, this classification is uh, appropriate, then they could look that. Okay, Grana is a, is a cheese that has the most different in sales across four different shops. So either in the one, in the one that, that you sell a lot of Grana, maybe you could uh, add some variety of Grana. Maybe, I don't know, from different distributors or something because it's a, it's a popular item there. Um, and you have listed, uh, we have listed 20 categories here, uh, sorry, families, but there are a lot, a lot more. So now, this was the base. Um, the base analysis for our visualization, and this is the tool that we will present to, uh, to the data provider. Um, what you can see here are four, shop, four shops um, and uh, colors and clusters represent different um, higher categories of items like uh, groceries, uh, like uh, beverages, and so on. Um, and so the size of the ball is the a normalized cumulative sales uh, of, of this particular family in, in the shop. And when you hover over one of the balls, you can see uh, the comparison of, of this family in all the shops. And you can see here that um, water of 1 to 1.5 liters constitutes 15% of sales uh, in this supermarket, who would have guessed that we that supermarkets sell mostly water? Um, and uh, this is the comparison with other shops. So in in shop number two, 211, they don't really sell that kind uh, that kind of water. Well, big big water, uh, which might be in line with the fact that this is a touristic shop or something. Uh, but yeah, you have uh, milk here, and you can also compare the, the differences. Uh, but this is a, we don't really, based on this, we don't tell them to reduce that, in, in, increase that assortment or, or something. This is an exploratory tool for, for DMAR to, to see where are the areas, what are the areas of, of improvement, where, where they could, where the shops are different the most, in what categories. Especially if we change to the to the other view, where we have plotted the differences. So these, uh, the size of the bubbles, represent the difference between the mean of sales in each of the shops. Uh, so the, the mean of sales uh, in in all the shops, and the sales in in this particular shop. So that means that this shop sells five percent uh, more water than the average across all the shops. So you can see that in, in these two, water, uh, two shops, there is more water. Ah, sorry, I should uh, mention about the colors that red represents below average and uh, blue represents above average. And here we can see the extent of, of the difference. Uh, so if you look at another item, you can see this is, a mil this is milk. And in this shop, uh, compared to the average, they sell a lot more uh, milk. And should we, yeah, this is another, is it meat, red meat? Uh, I must say my Italian improved a lot uh, after working with these guys. Uh, at least I know all the grocery names. Uh, <laughs> very useful. Uh, can you show, now, yeah, can we show now uh, the same thing, but uh, plotted for the subset that we were asked to analyze? So the, the five groups that I told you about. Um, the, these are the quantities again. And if, if we plot the differences, we think that the differences in these groups are not as pronounced as in, in the total, uh, in, in the whole data set. But still, we present it to, to DMAR if they, if they think that, for example, it's easy to change the sales of mozzarella in in these shops in order to, to tailor uh, the assortment more for the, for the type of customers that uh, come to the shop, then uh, well, they, they, they have our tool to do this. Uh, we analyzed, uh, this is the plot analyzed by the quantity sold in, in uh, all the shops. We also analyzed uh, the same thing based on the price. 
So how much, what is the proportion, uh, what is the share of, for example, Grana in the total um, sales in terms, of, uh, in terms of value, in terms of prices? Um, okay, and, and you can see the, the differences again, and you can explore. Uh, is there anything to add, Andrea? Andrea is the, the wizard that uh, made the visualization, so this is, okay. Okay, can we go back to the visualization, uh, to the presentation? And, okay, now I would like to spend uh, three minutes maybe on the, on the machine learning part. Um, we thought it would be nice if we, if we could uh, build a model that given a list of uh, transactions, a list of items uh, bought in a shop, it would predict the shop that these transactions uh, belong to. So the, we, we built a matrix of, uh, of transactions. We have the rows are days and items are, this is a simple binary matrix. We, di we didn't differentiate for, for quantities. We didn't normalize it. It just, whether this item was sold on this day uh, or not in a particular shop. Uh, so we trained it on our uh, trained data and then uh, used uh, a random forest model. And for those of you who are not uh, familiar with this, it's, um, it's an extension of a classification tree. So we have, let's say, we, we first look at whether water was, for example, water was sold in this shop on this day. If yes, then we, uh, we look whether beer was sold. If yes, then there is another branch. If no, we classify this uh, store as uh, store number or class A and so on. And we do that, we, th this tree would be very broad and uh, at, at the end of each branch there would always be a class. Um, and when we built the model, we got 95% uh, accuracy on the test set. Uh, on the test set which we took from a different time period that we had our uh, train set. Which, which is, uh, we think, a pretty good accuracy. It, this is the measure of AUC, area under curve, if you're interested. Um, and this, uh, these are the most important uh, families of products for this model. Um, and we would like, it would be nice if we had a, a visualization like I've just shown you based on this, but this is slightly more complicated. Um, in the first case, of the visualization, we showed you the differences in prices and uh, quantities and so on. In this case, it's more difficult to interpret why these families are more important for differentiation of the shops, because it might be the fact that they are heavier than the others, it might be the fact that uh, they, um, their packages have bright colors, whatever. We, we don't really know because we all we input into the, into the model is whether it was sold or not. Um, we did some basic network analysis. Do you want to say uh, a word about this? This is, yeah, if you... So this network shows the association between two items found in single transactions. The nodes of the circles represent not just, well, it's not really that cheese, which is formaggi, first one, top level is the best-selling item. This actually means that cheese is the item that aggregates the most with other items, um, typically pasta, for example. And this behavior sh is shared among shops, so, so we cannot really differentiate shops by looking at this kind of graph. So if we can just... Okay. So this is another shop, and the position of the nodes is totally random. Actually, <laughs> this is due to an interesting war between me, my machine, and Giphy, which is the visualization software. And I didn't mention also the fact that this graph just represents the five categories we were asked to, um, to analyze. So if you perhaps add 
other more predictive categories, we could spot differences. Um, okay, these are the same. Uh, some lessons that we've learned and you might uh, learn them from our mistakes. Uh, so pay attention to the request of the data provider because we, at first, we spent at least a week uh, exploring, having fun with data, but not really focusing on the, on, the, on the goal of the data provider. So then we had to rush a little bit in order to, to meet these requirements. Uh, the context of the data, of course, is very important. Uh, but also, I wanted to mention the tools. We initially started with building a pay, uh, pipeline of importing the data into MongoDB and so on. This is hard work by Simone. But then we realized that it will not really be that important for, uh, for, for, for the project because we had limited time and it, it was just, you know, uh, distributing our efforts into too many ways. So try, try and focus. If you have a limited time frame, just try and focus on maybe simple tools that are not as elegant as, as a, a proper pipeline would be, but they are effective. Uh, so the conclusions, we think that the classification is correct. Uh, the classification of the uh, DMAR stores is correct, but only on the, based on the four data points. We need more in order to, um, to confirm it. Uh, these are the most differentiating products that we think uh, are important for, uh, for the classes. Um, it would be great if we could have some data from another shop and use our predictive model that has a great accuracy on our, on our test data. If we could test it and see if it predicts uh, a certain class for, for an unknown shop that we don't know anything about. That would be a, a nice uh, way, to, way to test it. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention, and uh, thank you, Christian, Laura, for organizing, staying with us until 8 p.m. and so on. Thank you. Uh, also to our teachers uh, for, for great help, that, uh, for, for also great contribution that they made into the project. Andre uh, for machine learning, and uh, Fabio and Puria for visualization, and all other teachers, and thank you for coming here.